Good morning. If you are interested in getting more of this content or if you like this channel, pl please feel free to like and subscribe and go ahead and click on the little bell um, if you would like to get notified when new content becomes available. If you are interested in uh, private coaching, please uh, contact me at www.coachcat. Dot org, and I am currently working on um, making some video courses uh, to help overcome complex PTSD and trauma. So those will be available on the website soon. So um, in this video, what I'm gonna talk about is what happens when you have figured out the narcissist. Um, now, keep in mind, you could have been in this relationship for a very long time. If they're a covert narcissist, it could have been 10 or 15, 20, 30 years, no kidding. And you might not have any idea that you were actually with a narcissist because they did not fit into your uh, stereotypical thinking about what a narcissist is, which is typically more the idea of the overt narcissist. But if you were with a covert or neglectful or vulnerable or shy or introverted narcissist, they look very different on the outside. The interior life is the same. It's they have the three E's. The, uh, they, they are exploitative, they're uh, exploitation, they're entitled, so they have an incredible entitlement, and they have low empathy or impaired empathy or none at all. So the three E's, exploitation, entitlement, low, low empathy. Um, but what happens when you have figured them out? Um, because remember, they are all about wearing this mask. And if they are the coverts, they are even, they are really good at the mask because their mask can typically be this mask of shyness, sweetness, perfection. They seem almost better than the average individual. They seem like they practically levitate, like they have a little halo around their head. And they're just, you know, they seem, they present as if they have a high level of integrity, as if they're very pure, as if um, they're very virginal. Some of the, I've, I've spoke with some coaching clients about some of the female narcissists that are covert and they act, they'll lie about how many people they've had sex with. So they act as if they're almost like, you know, like virginal, right? Um, they're very, they can tend to be very angelic almost. And they can be very, they can come across as almost very sweet and vulnerable and shy and, you know, very loving and kind, like that is the mask. And, you know, um, a good example is some of like, say a Catholic priest, not all Catholic priests are narcissists, absolutely not. But there could be an example of a Catholic priest that is appearing to be, you know, very altruistic, very kind, very benevolent, very shy, very, uh, you know, loving and behind the scenes could be molesting children or cult leaders. Uh, I think David Koresh was used as, as an example of a, a covert narcissist. And um, even I think Osho or the Bhagwan Shi Roshnishi, if you watch uh, uh, wild wild country on Netflix they show the Bhagwan being this you know beaming happy darling little um, you know sort of yoga guru and meanwhile he's got like 500 Rolls Royces and he's using this cult to exploit people and for uh, money and sex and all sorts of uh, duplicitous things so most cult leaders are narcissists whether they're uh, you know Covert narcissists, overt narcissists, full-on sociopaths, psychopaths, they're, the, most of them have, they are uh, cluster Bs. But what happens, you know, what happens? Because keep in mind, these people are frauds. They are fake. This is a fake mask that they wear. It's a mask of perfection. Underneath it, they have duplicity, they gaslight, they lie, they cheat, they steal, they're frauds, right? This is a fake fake mask and they're very, very, very concerned with upholding that mask. So it they don't like it when you have figured them out. Um, it's, you know, when you when you know that their mask of perfection is BS. Um, what what they don't like, if you expose them, it is a real problem for them. They, it's almost like a vampire being exposed to the sunlight. They just start burning, like they just cannot handle it. Um, when you, um, usually this happens, you know, what happens if you figure them out is that you have exposed them. You realize that that is a mask, that the person behind it is not who they present to be. Um, you, if you start to hold them accountable, um, if you start to try to hold them accountable or to try to get your 
your name on title or to try to get things equal or to try to advocate for your rights or some form, um, they don't like that because they do not want to be accountable. Uh, you might find them cheating. Um, and, you know, that's if you found them cheating or lying or, get, you know, you've, you've discovered them. And then um, keep in mind that when you were in the relationship with them and you were buying into their mask, you might have been a very good source of narcissistic supply if you upheld their mask. Um, you could have been in a long-term relationship. I was in one for 10 years and I upheld the mask because I had no idea it was a mask. Um, I made that person look very good because I thought he was perfect. I had him on a pedestal. I didn't know he had a double life. I didn't know he was lying. I didn't know he was a cheater. I didn't know any of that. I didn't think he was even capable of any of that. Um, they absolutely hate it when you hold them accountable or when you set boundaries or when you say no or when you start expecting them to be a real partner or when you start exposing them for who and what they really are. And when you start to figure out that they're fraudulent, that they're liars, they're cheaters, they're thieves, they're, they've been wearing this mask of goodness that is fake. It is not who they really are. They just hate exposure. Because remember, they are addicted to validation. This is an addiction that they have. They cannot stand when people hold them accountable for their actions. They cannot stand when their you know, mask is tarnished and they need supply. They're absolutely addicted to supply. So when you take away the, their supply, which it could be just you thinking that they're wonderful and amazing when really they're not and you start realizing they're not and you start holding them accountable and you start wanting some reality um you know if you stop thinking that they are perfect and you stop validating them what happens is they they start going into withdrawals and they desperately have to get another source of supply usually they have multiple sources that they've already been grooming but they have to get like a new source of um permanent supply sort of or not it's never permanent but like semi-permanent supply so they can show the world that you know you're the problem so they get you know they they go into these new relationships right away usually there's overlap they don't take any time to heal neurotypical healthy people take some time to heal they figure out what was my part in that why did, where did I go wrong in that relationship how can I go to therapy how can I read some books to heal how can I become a better partner how can I do this differently next time that's what narcissists that is not what narcissists do um, think of supply as control. They want to control how the world sees them. They want to control how you see or think of them and how others see or think of them. So everything is this carefully constructed, um, you know, false image and they're trying to control how you think of them, how the world thinks of them, how others think of them. And they want to control and have you never call them out, never call them out on their duplicity, never say to them, hey, I, I think maybe you're not exactly who you're pretending to be. Like they do not want you to ever do that. Um, at the core of this narcissist internally is this incredible fear of abandonment. This is their deep, it's, think of it as like they have this abandonment wound that is festering and it's deep. And if they know, if you figure them out that they're liars and they're cheaters and they're duplicitous and they're not who they present to be, then you are likely to abandon them. And that is going to go, that is going to send them into withdrawals. They cannot handle losing supply. These are people, they can't be alone. Notice these people, like they don't, they're not alone. They're never alone. They always have multiple sources that they're grooming and they will immediately jump into another relationship or they are already in another relationship. You know, they're, this is how they work. And then they're gonna be grooming news sources with that person. So trust me, they're never just in one relationship. It just, they don't work that way. So no matter what the like new source of supply thinks, they're already grooming and working on other sources. The, you know, and what they'll do is they'll, when they jump into that relationship, they'll be like, oh, this is the love of my life. And you know, this was the, this was the true love and they'd been grooming them for quite some time. And just know this, I know that you've probably, if you're on these videos and if you're in this community, you have been there, right? This is very familiar to you. And what I want you to know really in your core, in your core of cores, that this behavior has none, nothing to do with you. None of this has anything 
to do with you. This is how they operate in all their throughout their whole life. This is how they operate. They don't stop doing this. I mean, I think a few few narcissists become self-aware and do things differently. Um, Sam Vaknin actually has an interesting thing called cold, cold therapy, and it's actually a treatment for narcissists to get well. So if you're a narcissist watching this video, you might want to go to Sam Vaknin's uh, website and do his cold therapy. He is a narcissist who has become self-aware and he's trying to do differently. He actually does a lot of good work to help the community of narcissist survivors and to avoid narcissists. So I give him a lot of kudos. Um, so none of this has anything to do with you. It has to do with the narcissist in security. They're deep seated in security. And on a personal level, I am so glad that I had such um, good, we went to a couples therapist. Um, I had never met her before. She was referred and she was referred to somebody who was an expert in ASD at uh, autism spectrum disorder because at the time I thought that the person I was with might have ASD. And after we went to her for six months, once a week, and she found out that, uh, this person was lying to her, gaslighting her, gaslighting me, lying to me, um, you know, acting like it wasn't having an affair, lying very cunningly. You had us both sort of convinced. And then after, um, you know, the last therapy session, I was like hysterical. I was crying. I was like, if you're going to have this affair with this married lady with these three kids at work, why would you bother going to therapy? Why would you bother doing that with me? And he said, probably the most honest thing he's ever said, he said, I was trying to keep it separate. I was compartmentalizing. That's what he actually said. And um, the next day, the therapist called me and she was like, are you okay? And I was like, I don't know. I was in shock. I was just so in shock. And she said two things to me that really stuck with me. She said, I need you to hear two things. And I said, what? And she said, one, this has, I believe that this has nothing to do with ASD, with autism spectrum disorder, because I was like convinced that that's what he had. And she said, and two, you need to hear this, really hear this. This has nothing to do with you. So hear that. This behavior has nothing to do with you. Now, if you tend to be codependent and you have porous boundaries, um, you know, you letting the narcissist into your world, that might have something to do with you because we've got to be vigilant to keep, keep these people out. We don't let them in the door, right? And I'm getting so good at that. But uh, so that, you know, is your part is, is, is noticing the red flags and staying away from these manipulators and not letting them into your inner circle, right? But your their behavior has nothing to do with you this is what they do they do this pattern idealization devaluation discard they love bomb have people on the pedestal then they devalue people and then eventually they discard as soon as they get so let down that the person that they're with is a human being and imper and not perfect they just can't handle that right so um, this has to do with the narcissist's insecurity and their addiction to external validation and their, their need for control and trying to control what other people think of them and with how the world sees them rather than just being their true selves and accepting that some people are not going to like them and others are, and that's just fine. So if they jump into another relationship, just know this, this is actually a gift for you. If they have secured a new primary source of supply this is a gift. I know it doesn't feel like that. I know this can be incredibly painful. And if you personalize it, it can feel awful. But this is a gift because if they are otherwise distracted trying to secure this new source of supply, they're going to have less energy to torture you. And you aren't going to have to put up with their bullshit anymore. The new source of supply is going to be their new victim. And that person has no idea because they're in the love bombing and they're enjoying that and they have no idea what they signed up for. They really don't. I mean, it can take these people, if they're coverts, if they're the neglectful covert narcissist, it can take them 10, 15, 20 years before you even realize what you are in, right? So, I mean, really, the new source of supply is going to be in for a, a long, hard road, and they might not know it. Um, you know, it may be that they stay for a long time before they discover it. And the, usually the new source of supply probably is um, less than you. And what I mean by that is, in this regard, 
you probably are starting to realize about narcissism. You've done some research. You probably started to look at your codependence and your trauma. I think if you're on these forums, you've probably done that. This person usually, not always, but usually they're also a trauma survivor. They have their stuff. They could be addicts. They could be alcoholics. They could come from families of trauma and they maybe haven't done a lot of this work. So they, they're like fresh, vulnerable supply for the narcissist. The narcissist knows their weakness. They've already honed in. They know how to manipulate that person. So you're gonna see when this happens, when you have started to expose a narcissist, you are going to see a mask come off and you're gonna see a narcissistic rage. And this rage might be very overt and it might be in the form of a tantrum or it might be something in in very in a very covert form they might be giving you weeks of silent treatment not responding to your calls not responding to your tech text messages they might be hiding out there in their room god forbid they might be even peeing into gatorade bottles that is a personal example months of urine in gatorade bottles sitting in the room i'm not kidding you um and you are going to see someone that you have never seen. You're gonna see somebody that you don't recognize. You do not know who they are. And it's very disconcerting if you've been with this person for 10, 15 years, you do not recognize who they are. Um, you have exposed them and you can see them for who they are and they're gonna go into the severe rage. Again, it could be a very cold rage. It may not be overt. It could be very cold and dismissive and um, you know, hiding out from you. They could be going into that really, um, into their shell, being avoidance, their de they, they're kind of, um, decomposition is going on. I can't, I'm not sure if that's the right word, but uh, they're, they're sort of um, deconstructing. They're, they're uh, you know, can be in this incredible sort of isolation in the little turtle shell hiding away. That, that can also be true. And you are showing the world that they are not perfect and they cannot handle that because their whole thing is about this image of perfection. Um, and this goes against um, everything the narc has tried to do. They've spent their whole life holding up this fake mask, this false self. And you are, you know, de you're saying that's not true. That's not real. What that, that's a mask. And this can go many different ways. Um, there can be, this can be, there can be violence. There can be bullying. It can be cold bullying. It can be overt bullying. There can be financial destruction. They will try to start destroying you financially. It can be, and it will be a smear campaign. It will be gaslighting. They will be making you question your sanity and your reality. It could be, I'm the victim, poor me. It can be verbal abuse. They can be isolating. They can be, um, you know, going mute, um, basically not responding, you know, giving you stonewalling, silent treatment. You know, there all these things could be happening and what's going to happen once the rage subsides and that's going to subside once they've secured their new source of supply and maybe gone through the divorce with you or whatever's going to happen there what will happen then is they will go back to their old ways of manipulation so the narcissistic you know um, sort of injury or wound. And that is their abandonment wound is on fire. And again, their violence, bullying, financial destruction, smear campaign, isolation, you know, um, gaslighting, a victim, they're the victim, verbal abuse, isolation, all of that could be happening, right? But then once that subsided, they go back to manipulation. This is their cycle. Control, abuse, manipulation. Control, abuse manipulation and the rage is this in them is feeling out of control because you see through their mask and you see who they are you see that there's manipulation and that they're very cruel and cold internally you see who this truth and so what they're going to start to do if you're still in their line of fire is they'll start to with the manipulation they're going to start picking at your wounds it could be very very subtle picking at your wounds and they are going to try to trick you um, back into being asleep so but they're going to you know pick, pick at your wounds pick at your wounds they're going to gaslight you they're going to play mind games silent treatment stonewalling manipulation they're going to be doing all this crazy stuff and they feel better 
when they start picking at your wounds, if they start getting the control back, especially if you're staying with them, right? If you're gone, good for you. But if you come back because there was the love bombing and then they start manipulating you again, they start picking at your wounds, trying to get at what makes you feel um, insecure, really messing with your insecurities, trying to create jealousy or insecurity and, you know, stonewalling, manipulation, silent treatment, all of this stuff. And they now feel better because they get a high from your suffering. That's right. I know that's a harsh reality, but they get a high from it because it makes them feel in control and it makes them feel important. And that is horrific, I know. Most of us do not get a high from other people's suffering. Sometimes we we get reactive and we want somebody to hurt because we're in so much pain. And maybe that's the truth for narcissists, but I don't know, like it's almost like they get off on it. Like they literally get a high. It makes them feel really good and in control. They love to create a reaction. It makes them feel important and it makes you look like the irrational crazy one. And I'm telling you, um, I have seen the way that some narcissists have manipulated their victims to such a degree that the victim really does look like the crazy one. The victim I had, oh my gosh, um, a friend of mine and a, a you know coaching client, um, Gosh, she was institutionalized. She was institutionalized by her narcissist and the world believed that she was the crazy one and he was a narcissistic sociopath. Um, I've actually heard a couple of different stories like that where she or, you know, or it could be a he, there is definitely female narcissist, don't get me wrong. 80% of narcissists are male, but 20% are female. And, um, you know, please know, I know if you're a man in this community, you have suffered if you have been with a female narcissist. I have a couple of coaching clients that have been with female, you know, they're men that have been with females and it's, it's horrific. Um, but either way, like, you know, in this case, it happened to be she was a woman. She was institutionalized. He looked like the sane one. And she was made to look like the crazy one because he manipulated and brainwashed. And my, the mindfuckery was so intense that uh, she ended up needing, you know, I mean, being host institutionalized. She looked like the crazy one to the outside world because she was reacting to hidden and uh, extreme psychological and emotional abuse. And they are going to triangulate. They are going to make you look crazy. They're gonna use their flying monkeys that either know or don't know that this person's a narcissist and they're gonna triangulate and they're gonna make you look crazy. So what you need to do in this scenario, super important, is you need to put up a wall and protect yourself. And they're going to keep trying to up the ante and increase their abuse, but you need to keep up the wall. You need to keep your boundaries. Uh, no contact is super important. You need to go no contact or gray rock. No contact with their flying monkeys. Um, you know, these people are toxic. These flying monkeys, some of them know the narcissist is a, dis is a disordered individual and they may be narcissists themselves, if, especially if they're in the family of origin, or some of them don't know. Some of them have just buy, they're buying into this insanity is the bottom line. Um, you need to go no contact with the narcissist family. Um, you know, no contact. Uh, therapy, super important. Trauma therapy, definitely trauma-informed therapy with somebody who understands narcissistic abuse. It cannot be just your everyday run-of-the-mill therapist. I feel like there's a lot, there's a gap here of people and their understanding of cluster B personality disorders. Um, people, you need to be with a therapist that understands complex PTSD. Your symptoms are of PTSD and a narcissistic abuse syndrome, and they're gnarly. Um, coaching, you know, get a narcissistic abuse coach to help you through the steps in this process um, to understand that what you're going through is actually normal considering everything that you've been through. You are, may, you may be horribly depressed. You may be hypervigilant. You may be having paranoia. You may be feeling all sorts of extreme things um, and insomnia and all the different uh, you know, symptoms that people have of when they've experienced this kind of abuse. But I'm here to suggest that all of that is actually normal considering the egregious abuse that you have uh, suffered. Um, start to heal your complex PTSD. There's a lot of books on it. Um, there are a lot of workbooks on it. There are support groups for complex PTSD. Um, start looking at reparenting your inner child because this is 
you know, this situation is actually waking up your abandonment wounding and your childhood trauma. Um, exercise, super important. Um, support group, go to a support group for narcissistic abuse survivors or CODA, um, that's Codependence Anonymous, or adult children of alcoholics and dysfunctional families and do some EMDR, maybe some TMS therapy. That's cr transcranial magnetic stimulation. Um, that's really helps for you to, that, that's very effective for people that have PTSD and complex PTSD. So you know, start doing the healing work and go no contact. If you have to co-parent with them, do the gray rock method. And I'm gonna make some more videos on gray rocks. I've had a couple of people ask for that. It's very difficult to do if you have to co-parent with narcissists, but there is a way to do it. So um, I'm just sending you, you know, some warm, positive thoughts for healing. I hope that you are taking wonderful care of yourself. I know that if you're in this community, you're in a state of shock and trauma and hypervigilance. And I'm here to acknowledge that, that that is actually normal and you will get through it if you do this work and if you start to heal and you stay away from the narcissist and you go no contact and you start to develop um, some good healthy boundaries you all will heal you get over on the other side of this and you will have i believe you have the capacity to have the most thriving life that you have ever had so please feel free to like and subscribe if you like this content and if you are interested in private coaching please contact me at www www.coachcat with a k.org. Thanks so much and have a wonderful day. Bye.